I wanted to take a look at a tribal archetype in Magic uh, Arena, but not one of the ones that was really established. So a while back, we got Fortified Beachhead from Urza's, whatever the Urza thing was, Brothers War, that's the one. Uh, and so we got this, this land from that set, and it was a really interesting card. This is essentially a dual land for uh, soldiers. It just has the downside of revealing a soldier card and the upside of having this other ability on it. And um, pretty interesting card. Uh, I think that this definitely made me interested in looking into the soldier archetype. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, this is Bant Soldiers, and pretty much everything in here is just some variant of Soldier or just good card in the Bant color space. Uh, we are Collected Company deck, so you'll see that everything is either 3 CMC or lower, and we are going to do the best that we can in order to get our opponents dead today. Let's take a look at the cards, shall we? Uh, we're going to start from the high end. We have Brutal Cathar. A, surprisingly, it's a soldier in addition to just being a really, really good white card. Um, it can exile something when it enters the battlefield, or if you flip it to Moonrage Brute and then back to Brutal Cathar, you can uh, exile another thing with it. Pretty good card. Um, I'm running it as a two of in here because we can dig pretty far with the Collected Company. However, I would absolutely be okay with running this as a four of if uh, people were to try doing that. I felt that this was the way that I wanted to run it, where there were other things that I wanted to have. You don't always need to uh, be removing creatures because this deck gets pretty wide and pretty tall quickly. Another thing that synergizes with soldiers is by Elspeth's command. There's not a lot of enchantment-based removal at the current moment, uh, or things that specifically target enchantments, so I think that this was a good one to include. It has three modes on it, and every combat you get to choose one of them. The only catch is you can't choose the same one twice in a row. So we can do a lot of things with this. It can make soldiers, which are going to get buffed by our other creatures. It can make something have plus one, plus one in flying, which is pretty relevant for finishing out games. And you can, if you have another soldier in your hand, you can give it plus one, plus one in vigilance perpetually if you'd like to do that. So a pretty good card. It kind of just once comes down, gives us some incremental advantage. And in tribal decks, you don't always necessarily have that. This one was just printed perfectly for the soldier archetype, so we're going to try it out today. It's just a one of, if it does come up, it is a nice little plus addition. Uh, I've played it a few times in games with this deck, and it kind of feels like a Phyrexian Arena type thing, where it's not really winning you the game, but it is giving you a little bit more of an answer to uh, deal with your opponent, or to kind of mo uh, to like amass a bigger board state. Uh, moving on, we have Siege Veteran. This is kind of just another Brothers War card. Uh, this thing is really good. This is essentially the same thing as the two mana card that does that, the Luminarch Aspirant, uh, but this one just happens to be a soldier. And then uh, when another soldier dies that is a non-token creature, then you get to make a token creature. So this card is going to help you kind of print out more 1-1s, one -ones, and that's going to help when we're buffing all of them and trying to make them bigger. Skystrike Officer, this is another good card. Uh, this one on attack will make a 1-1, and you can tap any amount of th three soldiers. So you can do three, six, nine, blah, 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 keep going to draw a card. Uh, this is pretty solid, and um, being able to draw cards is something that you might not be able to do in a tribal deck very often. So to have it here is pretty nice. Moving down to the two drop slot, we have a one of Harbin Vanguard Aviator. He is just basically a endgame threat because if you can play him on an already established board, you then get to go over any land-based defenders that your opponent has. Might be able to catch someone off guard with that. Valiant Veteran, this is just our lord for soldiers. Gives everything plus one, plus one. It also has the ability to uh, give counters from the graveyard if we exile it. And then uh, a very powerful soldier, probably one of the more famous ones in this deck, is Thalia, Garden of Guardian of Thraben. First strike, 2-1, taxes non-creature spells by 1. So we got to be careful with uh, our non-creature spells, but if we're playing against a Storm deck, then she's nice to have. Then we have Invasion of Gobicon. This has been a pretty solid card lately. Uh, when it ETBs, you get to tax something in your opponent's hand for 2, and if you get to flip it, which this deck can do, you get to 
put a 1-1 counter on every creature that attacked on your end step. Pretty good card. Intrepid Adversary, whenever I'm playing white creatures, I try to include one of these, because when you have a lot of mana in the end game and you get to play it, you can buff your whole board. And for this deck, which is going pretty wide with all the token creation, it's especially relevant. We also have Recruitment Officer. Uh, it's a good 1-1 that has a repeatable 4-mana ability to look for a creature card. So again, something that's going to help us in the late game. It's also just a 2-1 one for 1, which is a little bit better than normal rate. So we like that. And then finally rounding it out is good old Esper Sentinel. It, it essentially taxes your opponent uh, for 1 for all their non-creature spells, but you can also look at it as card draw. We're a deck that wants to get going quick, so all of our stuff is... Uh, basically untapped lands and we're also mostly white this is like a core white shell with basically five nine cards essentially nine pips are non-white so basically we just need one of each color theoretically in order to do everything that we want so a lot of the times we're going to be playing these pathways on the white side so kind of just another uh deck building not really restriction but honest, honestly just kind of like a uh better way of doing deck building because this optimizes our play patterns um anyway that was our bant soldiers deck tech i hope you guys are enjoying the content so far if you want to support the channel you can drop a like and subscribe to do so let's hop into some games and see if we can win with the soldier archetype here we go all right we're in round one let's do it we have a thalia in our opening hand and some good mana i'll keep it we are starting off, so we get the Esper Sentinel start. Uh, our opponent is 78% Mythic. We are Diamond 4. So let's see what they are playing. Uh, hopefully if they got matched with me, they were either waiting a long time with just some goofy deck, or uh, this may be a quick match. We'll see. Seems like they have been searching for a long time, because it looks like they're AFK. So I guess I'll just wait here until they come back. Oh my god, my opponent's actually here. That's crazy. Alright, so do I think I need to Thalia them? Doesn't matter, I think I'm going to do it anyway. So we're going to show them some sort of Death and Taxes type build, and then kind of show them green mana next turn. <laughs> Our collected companies get a little bit more expensive because of Thalia, but... If they remove her, then I cast a Collected Company. And then if uh, they don't remove her, she attacks and is really annoying. And then eventually I'll uh, eventually I'll have the mana to just cast the tax version anyway. I did that. I've been Legion. Sure. Uh, I can Invasion of Gobok on them. Nah, but I want to do this instead. Just start going in. We get a 14. Cheville, okay. Oh, they stay back here. Interesting. And they decide that they're out of there. Weird game. But uh, I guess uh, we will take that one. Let's move on to round two. All right, round two. This has everything but green mana. It's fine. Double veteran. Brutal Cathar might be necessary to get rid of a ramp piece. Polycranus Reborn, okay. Do this uh, showing one of these. I'll probably just be getting rid of Lupinos. Seven mana to make a bunch of Hydras, basically. I think Brutal Cathar is a good move. Okay, yeah, so they're just trying to ramp out a Lucranos uh, ability, I think. Oh, they really are, yeah. It's time. Right, it's a battle. One drop ripples and grows. Wow. They took a Pelugranos and just every piece of ramp in their deck. 
Looks like it's going to be good for me, though, because I have a Brutal Cathar coming. So we will take this uh, and swing in at Kiora. Got that sinking feeling again. Okay. That's a thing that could happen. Um, I'm considering trying to intentionally flip Brutal Cathar. I have four mana. I can't attack. Drawing one land means that I can double spell and flip it back on my turn. I'll pass. Now it's got ward. If they attack, that is fine. I'll go to 10. We might be taking a lot of damage this turn. I need to play the Valiant veteran next turn. I'm not blocking. We'll go to six. I need a land. This is actually kind of scary. What do I do if I don't find a land? I really need to flip this... Uh, Brutal Cathar. Nature flows with vigor. Oh, let's go. Never didn't have it. Okay, so white. Valiant Veteran is 100% the play. And then I'm thinking that I want to take the thing that will be okay if I have to sacrifice something. Alright, and then let's put a counter onto Veteran, I guess. Then uh, no attacks. Then we will swap, take Battle Manda. They do get to draw a card, that's okay. But at least we're not gonna die yet. Until they uh, inevitably kill Brutal Cathar, and then we're in a whole heap of trouble. Wolf Willow Haven? Okay. You like to see that. Did they have double Wolf Willow? No way. No other layer of the Hydrang, okay. Costs five mana to activate that. Okay, so I do need to block this now. I will do it like this. Gem. Oh, well, if they kill Valiant Veteran, then that sucks. It has to be like this, though. They're gonna kill the veteran. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I lose both of them anyway, right? Oh wait, no I don't. Wow, they should have done it the other way around. They would have killed both. Let's get okay, so. Vileswith's command is a thing that I could play. That could give something flying. Or my opponent could just concede. If we had drawn green mana at some point, we would have absolutely gone over them with Collected Company, but um, we were just able to do it purely on the strength of Brutal Cathar. What a good card. Anyway, that was our round two. Let's move on to round three. Round three coming up. Recruitment Officer, Siege Veteran. This is okay if we draw lands. I'm a little bit scared of keeping a two-lander. I'm going to mulligan it is better. Alright. Now, I'm going to actually do Alpha Command second. Oh well. Hmm. I want to know what my opponent's up to. <laughs> it's actually a bit more important to me. Oh, seeing a lot of triumphs like that makes me scared, and yeah, this is a, a good reason to be scared. So I'll get rid of their Doom Foretold. Uh, having played this deck before, I know that that is something that they want to have a lot of. They have the Calyxes in here, which uh, when I did play this deck earlier, I was not running. This is 
such a good card. Like, oh my god, Calyx is amazing. Um, basically, just being able to copy your enchantments. Like, imagine. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and move in here. Um, I'm probably going to need to make a creature that can tangle with Calyx. So it makes these better and bigger. And then hopefully offer a trade with it next turn. We can even do a Valiant Veteran. Valiant Veteran. Plus Harbin. Seems like okay. They'll probably Trial of Ambition me this turn, though. If they decide to not do that... Okay, so yeah, that makes sense. Yep. I'm thinking I might end up uh, redoing my abs and Doom Foretold Control uh, to include Calyx. Like, this is... I'm surprised I didn't end up playing with this uh, when I did. I forget if this was before Calyx had come out or not. I recorded that video far in advance. But um, I may have to return to this deck. Uh, Calyx is an amazing card in that one. Uh, let's go here. Um, Valiant Veteran and Harbin. So when this deals combat damage to something, they can copy their things. So I'll probably just discard Harbin, essentially. And then I also need to start making tokens with Elspeth's command. If they attack with uh, Calyx, I'm going to double block. I'll trade a two for one there. It's not worth taking the damage and letting that thing stick around. This is going to be a problem, though. There's a world in which I probably should have taken Calyx instead of Doom Foretold. Okay. Binding of the Old Gods is an interesting, uh, interesting include, but I think they're going to actually have us here. This is seeming pretty dire for us. So I can Invasion plus do something else. They take a turn off to do Treacherous Blessing, that's okay. Valiant Veteran can just copy Binding of the Old Gods repeatedly, so this Valiant Veteran just dies. Alex goes in, and I'll probably just <coughs> lose this. Get rid of an invasion. And I have to wait until the spining of the old gods go up, goes off. Alright, so I can make a token. Probably get rid of my Gobacon next turn. That's just brutal. Oh, and they have the other binding. Wow. I think I can probably just pack this one in. Doesn't look too winnable here. I sack that, and then, yeah, it's just kind of a slow boat here. I'll go ahead and concede this one, give it to my opponent. Very cool uh, deck. I really love the Doom Foretold build. It is a really different way to play Magic. I'm thinking that I'll probably end up recording with Calyx uh, at some point in the future, so do look out for that. If you are in the meantime looking for some Doom Foretold content, I've done a video on this about a week or two ago. Um, you can find it on my channel. Anyway, we're out of round three here and we're heading into round four. Let's go. All right, we're headed right for a round four. We have Elspeth's command here and recruitment officer. We'll keep it. We can actually show them mostly white mana here.
All right, here we go. Okay, so this is life gain. Sure. We'll offer them a trade if they'd like to make it, but I know that they generally don't want to make this trade. Sounds about right. Uh, if they attack here, I will make a trade for recruitment officer. I don't need that card as much as they need their speaker. Here they go. And like I said, I'll make that trade every day. We want to keep them off of their 27 life threshold. And here we go. We can get Bios West Command here and make a... Let's actually make this a flyer. And attack that into Giada. coming in okay so what do we do here we have four mana so we can just go ahead and play both of these cards uh, this guy comes out and so does this guy so at combat what am I gonna do I can make another token basically I don't want to attack here so I will just pass and then at the end of the turn I can draw a card See how they attack in. I don't think I want to make a trump block here. We will pass. Alright, and then I'll activate this. Uh, tap three of these guys. Take another card. Another Esper Sentinel. Find a Thalia. I mean, they're all blockers. Um, I can give Thalia first strike, which is not amazing. Um, I think Thalia would be a good one to kind of just stick up there, though. We will uh, not attack. And then on their end step, we can draw another card. Sky Strike Officer may end up being what gets us out of this, as our opponent is stuck on two lands. We gotta figure out how to turn our wide board into a tall board as well. Splendid Angel is not the card that I like to ever see. Luckily, I haven't gained that much life. It's uh, five or more life, right? So I would block that Angel of Unity there. This, not so much. I'm not sure I want to block that. Take four damage. It doesn't feel good, but I'll do it. We have to get a draw here. That is good. And then I can draw again. One, two, three. Two cards. Hopefully, this is going to find something that we need. And Valiant Veteran is exactly the kind of card that we're looking for. We found Collected Company without the uh, right mana source, which is terrible. And then now we can Recruitment Officer find a card and Sky Strike Officer find a card. Let's make another token. Now we're starting to get somewhere. These attacks in the sky are looking pretty close to lethal. Elspeth's Command is going to have to continue to make uh, blockers in the sky for me. They do another Resplendent Angel. Luckily, these Resplend Resplendent Angels aren't triggering yet. But, geez, this is not good. It costs uh, six to give that lifelink. So we're clear of that for quite a while. I mean, 
mean, do I just take five again? Three to draw a card, three to draw a card. I can draw one more card if I wait a turn. Let me look at a card here first. Thalia, Siege Veteran, Valiant Veteran is the move. So yeah, I'm just going to take this damage then. We go to six. Things are looking tough. One, two, three. We got green mana, let's go. All right, this is not looking terrible anymore. We have Valiant Veteran, and we have exactly Collected Company now. We're still not out of it, but we're looking a lot better. And then let's give something flying. It'll probably be one of these less interesting creatures like the soldier. <clears throat> I shouldn't block with Thalia yet. It should just be two of these if they decide to attack. That and the Esper Sentinel. <clears throat> I mean, I guess if I lose Thalia, it's not the worst thing in the world. They're not casting on non-creature spells, and I'm not casting Collected Companies that much. Okay. I just have to prevent them from being able to make enough life gain <laughs> in order to trigger their angels. They're very close to being able to do it, though. Killing that Speaker of the Heavens on like turn one ended up being a pretty solid move. Make sure to stop on the run step. <coughs> I can draw three additional cards here. Okay, so what do I do? I will first collect the company. Yes, Brutal Cathar is the move. What does Brutal Cathar take? Brutal Cathar, I gotta say, it like either needs to take a Resplendent Angel or a Giada. Oh, it actually takes the win. Wow. Uh, looks like I got wide enough for my opponent to say they didn't want to be here anymore. That was an impressive game. I uh, had a fun one in this one. Fun time in this one. Okay, so that was our round four. We have one more to go with our Bant Soldiers deck. Let's end on a high note. On to round five. All right, final round. Let's see what we can do with the Soldier deck. This is pretty solid. As for Sentinel on one, I'll decide between playing Valiant Veteran and Invasion. Because they did that, I think I'll probably do a Valiant Veteran and then go for the Invasion. I need to try to sneakily flip it. Doing this will incentivize them to attack with Fervent Champion. Maybe they bolt my face or something. Double Champion is ideal. Ah, that's not ideal though. So we take four. Brutal Cathar I don't think is good yet. Thalia might be good, actually. Fortunately, the colors don't line up. I have to play this as a white source. Valiant Veteran. Does that get played now? Cathar can deal with Fervent Champion, but not for long. I mean, it might just be I have to play Thalia. It requires that they deal with it. And she actually does trade for Fervent Champion. Steam can... I'll take four. Okay, so I can play... Oh, right, now I can't do Gobicon. Okay, so it's going to be Veteran plus Adversary. Yeah, Life Link may end up being huge. Uh, we'll just swing. We might be able to fight them on the damage front. I got this 
stage. Sweet. All right. That's good for us. They can't cast another spell because of Thalia. They may be holding a shock. I think they intended to play light up the stage plus shock. Okay, so I think now... Like, once again, I could take four. I think I will. Then... This comes out. Don't need to reveal anything. I can go upon now. We're gonna look at their hand and we're gonna take something. Okay, so Pyromancer, huh? We'll take Skewer. Then I attack with two creature, three creatures at this to ensure that I flip it. They get to trade with either Adversary or Esper Sentinel. My guess is they take Adversary. Oh, they just give it to me. Wow. All right, so I flip this. Uh, auto pay because it cost me one. Almost forgot about that. And we get to end our turn and make our stuff bigger. Might need to chump with Valiant Veteran here, actually. Yeah, I do need to. And then, oh, when Skewer the Critics comes out, I'm gonna have to use Light Shield Array to keep Veteran alive. <clears throat> No, skewer costs four? Why is that? Uh, I don't know why skewer costs four. Interesting. We do get to draw. That always feels good. And what happens now? Now they have the enough mana to play for the skewer the critics. They also can shock veteran. Let's see how they play it. Oh, so they go in. This is smart. This is very smart. So this is guaranteeing that I need to uh, block Steamkin. But then if they skewer me, I die anyway. Bummer. I think I'm dead. Uh... Ch -ch 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 -ch. Yep, so there's no block for me except for this one. And then I just have to hope that they target Veteran for some reason. But why would they even do that? And now... Death. Presumably. <clears throat> there it is. Okay. And we just barely took the L to Mono Red Burn. All in all, I think we did pretty well for this series though, as we round out number 5. Pretty cool deck here in this Bant Soldiers build. Um, I think it's really tight. Feels good. Um, Valiant Veteran is a really good card, I have to say. Uh, you only got to see it once this game, but when we get the Collected Companies happening, uh, things really get moving in terms of the tempo, and you can actually flip games that you're losing pretty quickly. Intrepid Adversary, uh, a card that has shown up to just be, you know, a body at some times, but... Uh, additionally, you know, that ability to buff your whole squad, like in this situation, is pretty uh, pretty valid. So uh, that's a thing to think about. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked, drop a like to support me, and drop a subscribe if you have not already and are new to the channel. We are posting videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so come around for those. With that out of the way, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.